Hi guys! In today's video, we're going to talk about your favorite topic, phrasal verbs. I know some of you are probably going, oh. Some English learners hate phrasal verbs, some love them, but we can all agree that knowing and learning phrasal verbs in English is necessary. My name is Anastasia, this is English with Linguatrip, and let's get started. Everything's in English. First of all, let me remind you what phrasal verbs are. In English, we have lots of different verbs and we know their meaning. But if we take some of the verbs and add a little particle to them, the whole meaning of the verb changes completely. And that is what phrasal verbs are. For example, you all know the verb to get, which can mean to receive something. I'll get you some coffee. But if we add a particle ahead, to get ahead, it can mean to be more successful, to move forward at something. To get ahead. If we say to get along with somebody, it means that you have a good relationship with that person. Well, we get along. We use different particles with the same verb to get and the meaning of the verb changes every time. It might be a surprise for you, but phrasal verbs in English is not a new thing. Centuries ago, for example, particle out had a simple meaning, outside, and it was used mostly with physical movements. For example, to walk out, you walk out, or to ride out, if you ride a horse. I'll ride out to greet him. With time, the meaning of the particle out was not limited to just physical movement, but it was also used uh, when people talked about sound. For example, to cry out, it's when the sound goes outside. Cry out. Ah. Cry out. Or to call out. Call out! Then again, with time, centuries later, the particle out had a meaning of that outward movement. You know, something is being moved out completely. For example, to die out. Some animals died out. So they're not living on the planet anymore. They were sort of forced out, out of the planet. That kind of meaning. We will die out there. So I hope you get the idea. Today, we're going to look at some really useful phrasal verbs. Some of them you might already know, some of them will be new for you, so keep watching the video to learn something new. Let's start with the phrasal verb to get over. Remember, it's a phrasal verb, so the meaning is not direct. So to get over means to recover or to stop feeling bad or feeling sad about something. For example, they're upset that you didn't call but they'll get over it. Or if, for example, something happened, something not very serious, and your friend is still upset, you can say, oh, come on, get over it. Means move on, recover after it. Get over it. A good phrasal verb, to hang out, means to spend some time together, maybe to have a party. You know, Google Hangouts, yeah, it comes from that word, to hang out, to spend some time together, to chat, to do something together. For example, we like hanging out by the pool. Where did Paul hang out? To let somebody down. That means that if you promise something to somebody and you don't keep your promises, or people expect you to do something, but you don't do that, so you let them down, you didn't keep your promise, their expectations weren't fulfilled. For example, she felt that her parents had let her down. Don't let me down, down, down. We have an awesome ebook, Secrets of English for Intermediate Learners. It's not just another book with vocabulary sections and uh, grammar charts that you will never use. This book has brief notes on actual handy information for those who want to get the ball rolling and achieve an advanced level of English. You will learn relevant words and phrases, grammar, 
pronunciation, and you'll even learn tricks for managing efficient small talk. The link is down below. Go check it out. Two very similar phrasal verbs. The first one is to look down on somebody. If you imagine it literally, to look down on somebody means to think that somebody's worse than you, to think that you are better than that person. This is not nice. When people look down on somebody, it makes them mean people, you know, not very nice people, but yet that happens. So if you look down on somebody, it means you, you think that you are better than them. For example, the other children look down on her because her parents were poor. But she doesn't look down on Dylan. The opposite verb, this one is to look up to somebody. This doesn't necessarily mean that you feel that somebody's better than you, but it means that you see somebody as a role model for you. You think that that is a good example of a career, of a good example of a person, a good example of a certain behavior when somebody's kind and lovely. You can say, oh, look up to somebody. For example, I look up to my parents. I think they're great people, so I look up to them. To look up to. This is a useful phrasal verb, to pick on somebody. When uh, somebody picks on you, it means they try to find little things to comment about, which are not usually very nice. It's not like bullying, not at all, but maybe like a very soft version of bullying. When when you try to comment and say something a little bit mean to somebody else. For example, he picks on the younger boys at school. Nobody picks on his sister! If you drive a car, this phrasal verb would be really useful for you. To pull in or to pull over. It means to stop your car by the side of the road. For example, I couldn't pull in near the mall because there was no parking space available. Police, police. Also in films, if you see that a police car is chasing somebody else, they can say, pull over. It means stop your car by the side of the road. Stop the car, pull over. To run out of something means not to have that anymore. For example, they have run out of ideas. It means they don't have any more ideas. We've obviously run out of ideas. The next one is a very good one. I'm sure that you've come across some people on social media who do that. So the next phrasal verb is to show off. To show off means to brag about something or to demonstrate something you have that you think that not many other people have or show some talents that you think that other people don't have again but it's not a very nice thing to do you can do it as a joke though for example i wanted to show our new car off show off. the next phrasal verb is to stand out it means to be different to seem different from the rest for example his height makes him stand out in the crowd it doesn't have to be something physical like height or hair color or anything else it can be some personal characteristics as well if somebody is very kind or is very happy they can stand out as well not stand out in a crowd the next phrasal verb is to work out i'm sure that one of its meanings you already know if you go to the gym and you do some exercise that means you work out. You can use weights to work out, for example. You can take a fitness class. That counts as a workout as well, so you work out. I work out. Another meaning of this verb is to solve some puzzle, for example, or to work out the answer. So if, you, if you're in a maths class and you're looking at some problems and then you think of the answer, so you work it out, you solve the puzzle. Everything worked out. And another phrasal verb for today is to take after, which means to be like somebody, usually your parents. For example, your daughter doesn't take after you at all. Well, we say that somebody takes after their parents, for example, it can mean their appearance or their personality as well. It can be both. 
It's amazing how much kids take after their parents. This is it for today, guys. I hope you find this video useful. Let us know which phrasal verb you enjoyed most. You can try and write an example using those phrasal verbs. Don't forget to watch our other videos, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.